welcome to my proof on the central angles of a circle being the same if they subtend the same size chords. So this proof can be found in the Google Doc. And uh, it should look something like this. I think the top is written up a little more specifically. And they have the proof thing ready for you, but it's the same proof. Uh, basically, the idea on a, on a circle is that the, if the chords, so this is trying to say that if these chords are the same length, then the central angles, which we're looking at this angle, ACE, ACB, and DCE and trying to prove that those two angles are the same. So that's what we're trying to do. So maybe I'll even just write that in here. Prove that angle ACE, oh, ACB is congruent to angle DCE. So that's our goal. We are given that chord AB is congruent to DE. So let's start with that as our given. Uh, the th other things you want to notice that when you're looking at a circle proof or just circles in general and solving for things is where's the center at? That's always a, a good thing to notice. The circle C, right? Circle C has its center at C. And when you're looking at a diagram, just make sure of uh, where the center's at and make sure it really is the center. Uh, down below here, I'll just give you a little example. Sometimes you have a center, but you'll have two intersections, uh, chords, intersecting chords that don't intersect at the center. So it might look really close to it, but you have to be careful that it really is the center or not uh, to use some of the properties. For example, the next thing I'm going to do here is say that AC is congruent to DC, which is congruent to BC and also CE. Why? Because all of those are the radius or the radii of a circle. So I know that this is equal to that, which is equal to that, equal to that. The distance from the center to the points on the outside of a circle, all those infinite number of points, that distance has to be the same. That's the definition of a circle. So you can say radii are congruent or uh, definition of a circle, um, that would be acceptable too. But that re that's really going to give me a lot of information. So you can see now that I have all three sides of the triangle on the left and the triangle on the right. All three, si uh, all three sides are the same. So now I have congruent triangles, which should remind you what we did way back at the beginning of the year. Congruent triangles. Well, not the beginning, but kind of. It's been a while, right? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just say it doesn't matter if I pick E or D because it's an isosceles triangle, so it wouldn't really matter. But I'm going to say DCE. Oops, I shouldn't have said, oops, that's not right. Let me, uh, because of the way I wrote the first one, I have to match them up properly, don't I? So A, I'll put with D. But B, I'll match with E, and then I'll put C with C. All right, so that is why side, 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 congruence. So this is congruence, not similarity. Don't confuse the two. Sometimes you'll be doing a congruence proof and sometimes a similarity proof. This is congruence. So they're congruent. So if they're congruent, that means all their parts have to be congruent. And I will know what I'm trying to prove. ACB has to be congruent to DCB. DCE, sorry. Corresponding parts of congruent figures are congruent. And of course, you can use triangles if you want instead of figures. That's it. It's proven. Uh, look for the next video for the next uh, warm-up proof. This is warm-up proof 10.1, uh, warm-up proof number one.